All righty, thank you. Yamak Naya Gila. Naya Gamaroi Wali Aimardi from Australia. I've come here just to join forces um, and to show solidarity. But the reason I'm in England, and if I can tell this story, is because in 1875, Queen Victoria recognised the sovereignty of Aboriginal peoples in Australia. But unfortunately, the orders in council never ever got down. The message never got down to my people. And as a consequence, we've lost the country and they continually invaded the whole of our lands. Now, right now, we have a movement called the Sovereignty Movement back home. And we are a people who are 100%, or I should come back down and say 93%, who are welfare dependent. That's over a million people who are, in fact, welfare dependent. We don't have any income of our own. We have, I could stand here for hours and talk about uh, the type of atrocities that have been perpetrated against Aboriginal people in Australia. Unfortunately, the, the way in which they did it is by law. And the only way in which they could get those laws into place was the signature of the Queen, of your monarch here in England, to assent to those laws. And it's, it, it is a sad indictment against the British system that's occurring in Australia back then and that continues to do so now. We have now one of the highest death rates of any people in the world per capita. Our populations die 20 years younger than the rest of the Australian society. Our juvenile death rate from suicide is the highest in the world and um, they boast and they say that in Canada the indigenous population youth suicide is the greatest in the world but doing comparisons per capita Australia holds that death rate. We also have one of the highest imprisonment rates in the world and we are trying to work out what the problem is. But now having come to, uh, to England in the last five days, it's begun to very, become very clear to what's happened back home. In the 1875 Act, Queen Victoria, having recognised our sovereignty, made it impossible, or should have made it impossible, for the British and any landowner to occupy our lands. But unfortunately, we were not told by anybody what that 1875 recognition of our sovereignty meant. And so the old people that were told back then, and it came down through the generations, that Queen Victoria gave us our land and recognised us as independent people. But unfortunately, our people did not understand the Western education system, nor the way in which the, that law impacted on us and gave us those rights. And so without them really fully understanding the language of the English, we were not able to understand, the old people were not able to understand the significance of what was given to us and what was recognised. And so the problem that we have now um, is far greater, is far greater than what it was during the colonial periods. I might just add that when you talk about economic um, gain around the world and the world's economies and the, um, the, the, the capitalist, um, capitalism that's occurring and that's, that's working against people all around the world, we talk about the 1%. If we look at Australia, Australia right now is a gemstone to the world because every mining company, every major um, gas company, every major oil company that you have anywhere in the world is now currently raiding the resources in Australia. And they are doing this without any type of restrictions. And in fact, they, the percentage of the, um, the profits that go out of Australia is something like about 2,000%. And in Australia, they give subsidies to these mining companies to come in. We have a, uh, the, the type of laws that exist in Australia right now as well that have been changed just recently is laws like the Northern Territory Intervention. The Northern Territory Intervention in Australia is nothing but a martial law. And it's a martial law whereby the military have come in and taken, percent, taken over 37% of the landmass of Northern Territory, and Northern Territory is greater than England in terms of landmass. Um, and so they come in and taken 37% of the land and they've taken away the people's right to say yes or no. There is no veto rights, 
there is no right for the people to talk about their lambs. They've just taken over, imposed upon the people a colonel of the, of the Australian Army and brought in the military, and the military now occupies our lands. The only way in which they can give some civil, uh, civil understanding to that movement and this uh, martial law is that they give the power to the Australian Federal Police, uh, which is a civil, civil uh, group, to look after and be responsible for Aboriginal people in those communities. But as they, as they took the land and as they've taken the land and moved the people away, the worst part about this is that they've, they've removed the people from their homelands and they're forcing them out of their homelands. And so they're putting them into 20 hub centres throughout Australia. And these hub centres in the Northern Territory is where they want to locate the population. Now, why do they want to do this? We've, we, the reason that they have given to the public is that it's to protect the children and to give people more access to resources and to, um, to a better living standard and education. This is not the case. In fact, the Northern Territory has a great vast area of land that is unleased to the American military complex um, on a peppercorn lease every year. Furthermore, it has just been announced in Australia that they're going to set up a new base in the Northern Territory of a new military complex which will house something like about five to 10,000 American personnel. Um, and this will take place right next to Darwin. And the only place that they can take in Darwin, in that Northern Territory, is Aboriginal land. So they're going to place an American military base on the Aboriginal lands. Now, we might also just um, pause for the moment and let me just emphasize that America has a very big interest in Australia. And part of the, that interest is pretty much scattered throughout that northern and western part of Australia, northwestern part of Australia, because this is where the military industrial complexes are and that the Americans are building right throughout. In fact, if you look at, um, if you look at how much land the American military complexes um, have in, the, in, in Australia, you'll find that they equate to about the size of Germany. And so that's a massive land area um, that is now occupied by them. The other problem that we have is that in the Northern Territory, under this regime, it's taken away the people's right to negotiate over mining on their land. So the white man who has been the, maid, um, the sheriff, basically, of our territories, this man is the only one who can now approve mining. Aboriginal people are not consulted. They can come in and mine anything in the Northern Territory without Aboriginal approval. This is also a similar case in other major parts of Australia. We are unfortunately being raided by the big multinational corporations. Our people are trying to work out how do we defend ourselves from this because we are at war with the multinational corporations. That's who we're at war against. And we're at war against the Australian government for allowing these things to happen. And unfortunately, we don't have resources to be able to do it. The royalties that they give to Aboriginal people uh, from mining is controlled by the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs under the Audit Act in Australia, and so Aboriginal people do not have access to, the mine, to any of the wealth uh, that's generated in their name. And the government is using that to use against us, and so they're funding the programs that they impose upon us. The, um, the Aboriginal people through the sovereignty movement are attempting now to stand the ground and fight. Unfortunately, when you're in a revolution, people will get hurt. No matter how you look at it, people will get hurt. And this is the situation that we now realise that we're in back home. And unfortunately, we have been going now for a long time in fighting against whites. We have lost a lot of lives. We continue to lose many lives in that battle. Australia is a country that put up as a place where everything is unky-dory, everything is fine. But in the underbelly of Australia, it is one of the most racist countries you will ever find in this world. And right now, Australia, as far as I'm concerned, it's a new South Africa. It's a new battleground for civil and political rights of a people. The natural resources that we have, unfortunately, and this is what we need to, the other point that my people would like 
for the messy succumbia is that unfortunately to maintain this type of system that exists in Western Europe and in these de democratic nations, it is the indigenous people who stand to lose most. Everywhere in the world we are being assaulted, we are being crushed by the multinational corporations and the, we have very little defence because very few of us have military um, numbers, we don't have the might of numbers nor do we have any ability to be able to fight against the dominant society. And so it's only through movements such as this that we can align ourselves with to try and work to undermine it. But we have one, one weapon in our armour that we're going to try and use. We have been looking at methods of bringing down the corporations, just the same as you guys. And as far, we can only come up with one solution, and that is we need to identify who all the shareholders are of each of these big corporations. We need to name them, we need to shame them. And in the United States there is a law that we will try and use. And that law is called the Foreign Torch Law. It's only ever been used in the last 300 years three times, so that's once every 100 years. And so the only way in which we can have a go at this is that under that Foreign Torch Law we can sue the com companies that are operating in Australia because that have ties with the United States. Moreover, we will not only sue the companies, but our intention is to find out who the principal shareholders are of those companies and sue those individuals because they are profiting in, from those companies' um, operations in our lands. So we hope that there is only one, there is a way in which we can bring down the corporations and we are going to take and take every step possible to protect ourselves and protect Mother Earth. Thank you. Interestingly, I don't know if anyone knows about the Occupy action on November the 30th when we occupied the headquarters of Extrata, which is on the FTSE 100. Their CEO is the highest paid CEO last year in the UK, got 18 million pounds roughly. Um, and Extrata was a company taken to court for its planned mining in the Northern Territories. And the court found against Extrata on behalf of, of the native peoples there. And the, the law that this, this man was just telling us about um, was the response was intended to overrule the court. So they went and used basic principles of justice, said this is clearly wrong, it shouldn't happen. The court said, yes, you're right. And they went and got the law changed. This is how incredibly powerful corporations are. You know, we're told that we have this balance of power where, you know, courts make decisions based on principle and, you know, the powers are separated between the government and the courts and it all works. That is a concrete example of what happens the whole time about how the real interests of corporations can actually turn over basic legal principle to the massive detriment of millions of people across the world, as we've been hearing right now. Thank you. Goodbye.